It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the movie of September 21st, 2001. Of course, this is still 10 days after the September 11th attacks, and like I said in the last episode, there was a movie that was supposed to come out this weekend in big trouble, which got pushed back because of the events of September 11th, and they had to change the marketing of that around, so we only have one movie that came out this weekend, but, um, oh boy, it is quite a doozy. It's uh, Mariah Carey in her first leaning feature film debut, and that is Glitter. Everybody, my daughter over there. She's gonna be a really big star one day. You guys in for a real treat? Come on, y'all, give a hand. Come on, give a hand. Come on, give a hand. Come on, give a hand. Proving yourself is everything. Hey, Billy, can you repeat that verse? Okay. Let's go. Let's go. They don't matter. They're just back up. One woman is about to get the chance. When the microphone comes, do something special. To go from unknown. You have got a beautiful voice. I want to produce you. Yeah, right. Let's To a world she's only dreamed of. Don't you be getting all freaky on the first date. It's right. not a date. Remember the name, Billy Frank. I didn't even turn you up. Hey, I'm on the radio. I'm a big fan. Maybe we should get together. Then when you work with other producers. The label makes these decisions. Well, you can't let him use the best of you. Well, what makes you think that's the best of me? Music brought them together. We're on our way, baby. Fame could tear them apart. Any of us will go together. Don't forget that. But love He's here. will never let it end. To us. Mariah Carey. Glitter. Let's go. Let's go. The DJ said no. So in Glitter, Mariah Carey plays Billy Frank, an aspiring singer who, along with her friends Louise and Roxanne, is a club dancer. And Timothy Walker, played by Terrence Howard, offers them a contract as backup singers and dancers to another singer, played by Pamela Lakshmi, from, um, you see her on Top Chef all the t time. She's also been in Sharp Pace, Revenge, a lot of stuff for the BBC. But uh, she's the singer that they're, they're backing up. And at the premiere of the song they record, Billy meets a, a, a nightclub DJ played by Max Beasley, who helps her in her solo career, and in the process, the two fall in love. Now, really, the craziest thing about this movie is that it's a bad movie, but it isn't a horrible movie. It's not really... Like, the story is very much generic. It's actually the second movie we've gotten in the September of 2001 where you have a storyline that focuses on... A, a kind of a jazz singer type of storyline here. The movie itself is not that bad. It's just very generic, and I think Mariah Carey in here is not really the biggest problem with her movie is that she's not really doing a whole lot here to warrant her as an actress. I mean, she's not really playing a character. She's just playing herself. And you know, if you're gonna make it, in a, if you're gonna make it as a musician turned actress, you gotta be able to play more than just yourself. I mean, that's what, the, you know, people like Madonna have done that successfully. Beyonce Knowles has done that successfully. I mean, there has been a lot of singers out there who have been successful at uh, transitioning from musician to an actress. I mean, you're an entertainer. And here, it's not, to, it's, she's not really doing a whole lot with it. And the film really struggles because of it. And, um, and really, the movie itself is not the biggest thing I wanted to cover with this because the movie itself is just, it's just bland. It's bland, it's mediocre, it's nothing that grand or spectacular, and it's just... It's just not that... Enjoy it's just not an interesting movie on any way, shape, or form. It's mostly a mess of a film that really doesn't do anything new or different that makes it stand out on its own, but not re that's not really the big thing I wanted to cover with this. What I want to cover is the controversy going on behind the scenes. I should say controversies because... Uh, obviously, this is just opening up days after September 11th, and, um, yeah, a movie like this is not going to do well a, a couple days after September 11th. In fact, there's a, literally a picture on Wikipedia's page where you see the Twin Towers burning on September 11th with a glitter poster in the background, and it's just like, good lord, man, like, but even with that, even with that, we need to go back two months before this, because if you watch Total Request Live on MTV with Carson Daly on July 19th, 2001, 
you know almost immediately what I'm about to bring up here. So, um, so she was on there a month beforehand promoting the album for this, and then, you know, you know there was a thing on there where she some things had started to come out where she was dealing with some erratic behavior. She had to do this massive promotional campaign where she barely got any sleep, and she and then she shows up on uh, the show 106 in Park on the BET network where. She hid her thighs between large pillows and ranted that her life was one day that was continuous. Like, there was... Something was about to bubble up here. And sure enough, two days later, on Total Request Live on MTV, she comes up out of nowhere, and she does this. That was, uh, on Real Love Remix. Love a boy, with, with... come on and love me. How's that? Give me more. Um. Uh, <laughs> Mariah Carey. I don't know. What are you yeah. doing here? Is the question. I'm here. Can you hold this? Yeah, sure. I brought you a present. It's this shirt. Yes, of course it does. What are you doing? Oh my God. What are you doing? Mariah Carey is stripping on TRL right now. Is it my birthday? That I didn't know about it. Wow. You like this? Holy mackerel. You like this? Hey, can we get the AC cranked down? The AC, crank it down, get nice and cool. Don't stare at her and help her through this. I just wanted one day off when I can go swimming and look at rainbows and like eat ice cream. Right, right. And, and maybe like learn how to ride a bicycle. What's wrong? Every now and then, somebody needs a little therapy. Yes, I understand that. And today is that moment for me. <laughs> really what I'm saying inside is, wow, I mean, I hope she is okay. I really think she just kind of blew a gasket. Sure enough, the next day she's... You know, checked herself into the hospital. I mean, that's a full-blown meltdown right there. That's the textbook definition of a meltdown where you're just doing stuff to get attention and you have no idea what you're doing. And strangely enough, nobody really noticed... Again, nobody really noticed anything too serious at first. She still did stuff after this. Like, she did a record signing for in Long Island. She went on Howard Stern. But it didn't take it till like, you know... She started rambling on different subjects in general here and like, you know, talking this. There was one point where she had all these erratic voice messages posted onto her website. And that that was a, and like almost a week, a week later. That's when they finally said, OK, you need to be checked into a hospital because you are having an emotional breakdown. And sure enough, because of that, they had to postpone the movie because it was supposed to come out in August, late August on Labor Day weekend. But then they pushed it back because of what had happened with Mariah Carey. And sure enough, I mean, her, when she got out of there, she got back to work, started promoting the movie again. And then September 11th happens, and to the point where, you know, she's talked about it since then, talked about that she believed the film's failure at the box office was largely due to the soundtrack being released on September 11th, the same day as, of course, the terrorist attacks. And she went on to say that the movie was released on September 11th, 2001. Could there be a worse day for the movie to come out? I don't even know that many people even saw the movie, which... Okay, you can use that as kind of an excuse, but if you're just going to sit there and pretend like the th thing that happened to you two months ago where you're literally having an emotional br and mental breakdown in several places is not a contributing factor to this. It's just like, you've, yeah, clearly something was going on with her, and it really, it's unfortunate because, you know, Mariah Carey, I, th I still think of her as one of the great singers that we have. I mean, she's right up there with people like, you know, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston. I'll even say guys like Sam, Sm people like Sam Smith, modern guys like Sam Smith, The Weeknd, you know, a lot of great singers out there. And she's definitely very high up as one of the great singers of all time. And, you know, this was just at a point in time where every, you know, she was having so much success. I mean, she started a career back in the in early 1990. And it, it got to this point 11 years later where she finally just had this moment where, like, everything was just, like, too much for her. And she broke down and basically had to start from scratch again. And shortly after that, I mean, she took some time off. And then after that, her career kind of bounced back again. And now she's the Mariah Carey that we know her as today. She's one of the great singers. She still makes a great, is one, she still makes a ton of great songs now and then. And um, she's been in some movies too, which is literally playing, she's literally playing herself. And it's not in like this movie right here where it's supposed to be her storyline. It's like in 
cameos where she's literally playing herself. She was in You Don't Mess With the Zohan. She was in, um... What was another movie she was in I'm thinking of? She's been in a couple of Lee Daniels movies. Really good Lee Daniels movies. Precious. She was in The Butler. I mean, she was the mayor in the Lego Batman movie. So people forget that she was in that movie. And she was actually pretty funny in there. Even though it's a, basically just a small cam a small little cameo there. And uh, she even did another movie that came out after this a year later called Wise Girls. Which also had Mira Sorvino in it. Mira Sorvino and... Um, Mira Sorvino and uh, Melora Walters. And... I've never seen that movie, so I can't really say if it's any good or not, but um, but she has proven that she at least can show that she's still, she could be a, she could be a good actress if you put her in something where, you know, she's actually given something to do and has a good script to work off of. With this, it was really hard to make this work, mostly because of the fact that, yeah, this is a film that is clearly trying to be the new jazz singer for a new generation. Kind of, We already had a movie that was trying to do that with Rockstar, and that failed miserably. And um, with this... I don't think it's a bad movie. I just think it's a major missed opportunity on a number of different le levels. It doesn't do anything new or unique that makes it stand out compared to other movies like this that have done it so much better. And it's not that the movie is bad. It's just there's nothing there. There's nothing about it that makes it stand out. It's just another one of these movies that we've seen done to death so many times. And it just gets to the point where it's just like, what am I supposed to take from this except for a story that we've seen done to death so many times? And... It's just a film that the film was just not a good movie. It was just not a good film to begin with. And, you know, you can make a companion movie to something and make it fun. Like, I mean, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker is such a bizarre, what the hell were you thinking when you made this movie? But at the same time, it's still a trip. It's still a fun, nostalgic trip. I mean, I just saw a movie that just came out yesterday, as at the time of recording this, on Amazon. Jennifer Lopez has a new movie out. This is Me Now, which is a companion album to a new album, companion to a new album that's out right now. It's a, it's a bizarre mess of a movie, and I can't believe she actually decided to do... So, looked at Moonwalker and said, well, I could do this too. I can be as chaotic if I, like, like Michael Jackson can. And it's really an interesting trip of a movie. And um, I gotta say, man, I actually kind of found myself enjoying it because of how insane it got. And also because it's a fun short ride. It was only an hour long. This thing is, I think, over, an hour, over two hours, if I'm not mistaken. About two hours. So I was, I was close, but... um. But yeah, like they really needed to have something really stand out in terms of the story and actually give Mariah Carey a good script to work with to actually make this work. But um, hey, the soundtrack was a success eventually, so I guess there's that. But um, the movie, not so much. And it's definitely definitely a movie that's most, mostly known more for the controversies going on behind the scenes, the fact that it was released just days after 9-11, and... It just didn't work out. It just didn't work out on a number of levels. You can see why Mariah Carey hasn't tried to hasn't tried to really establish another leading role since then, taking mostly supporting roles and even in when she does take a leading role it's in smaller movies, like I talked about Wise Girls, but um but um I mean it's not a good movie. It's the bottom line here, it's not a good movie. But I don't think it's as bad as everyone made it out to be. I think it's just bad because of the stuff that was going on behind the scenes. It's just a generic movie mediocre film. I mean, it's nothing about it that makes it worthy or necessary, and it's just like, there's really nothing about it that I really need to see more of. Like, it's just like, I saw it, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was, so I guess that's the best positive thing I could say about it, but to, but I have no real intention of ever watching it again. I mean, and you know what? I saw Crossroads with, the, with Britney Spears that came out just months after this. Now, that's a movie that's much worse than this movie is. This is just bland... That movie's a trip on its own. We'll get to that one eventually, but um, but yeah, not much more I can say about this one. Glitter, I'll just say that it's not as bad as people made it out to be, but it's not good either. And so with that said, we wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies, and when we meet next time, we'll have three movies to wrap up a very, very rough month. Um, Michael Douglas and Brittany Murphy in Don't Say a Word, Ben Stiller starring in Zoolander, and Anthony Hopkins in Hearts in Atlanta. So we'll take a look at those three movies on tomorrow's show. But until then... Uh, thank you so much for watching, and if you want to see more videos like this, uh, please hit the place on the next page, check out the previous episode, and also don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this on this channel. So with that said, I am off, I will see you guys next time, and until then, as always, take care.